whatever you have missed, today you will collect it back. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better, amen. amen. Lord, in this covenant of restoration service, locate me. Make that your prayer right now. Locate me. Locate me. Locate me. Locate me. Give me a touch of a lifetime. Let something new answer in my life. I choose not to go back the way I came. I choose not to go back the way I came. Show yourself mighty for me in this service. 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 Stretch forth your hand of restoration and recovery for me. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God of restoration, answer your name in this service. Amen. Wipe somebody's tears away. Amen. Bring to an end the error of losses in someone's life. Amen. Whatever glory that has faded away, Lord, today let there be restoration. Amen. Any power behind financial losses in your life today, there shall be recovery for you. Any glorious opportunity you have lost today, it shall find its way back. In the name of Jesus Christ, it shall be well with you. This service will answer for you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you are saying amen, make it better. Put those hands together for the Lord and please take your seats. God bless you. I welcome each and every one of us to this covenant day of restoration service. And I want to let you know that God has located you for a turn around. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. This What you know determines what you do. You can never do what you have never known. What you know determines what you do. You can never do what you have never known. What you do determine where you will end. No man can determine your end. What you are doing now is a pointer to where you will end. May you end well. Amen. May you end in a good place. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Understanding is one of the major factors that determines the results of life. David said, the righteousness of thy testimony is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. Everybody is living, but not everybody is living well. Everybody is 
is living, some people are patching life. The man in the village is living. But his condition is not what he bargained for. You that is in the city, you are also living. So until you understand better, the quality of your life can not, never be better. Because you are living now by reason of your level of understanding. So everything you are doing now is a product of what you understood. Please, off it fast. Off it, off it. Huh? Don't worry, very soon you'll be enjoying air condition. Amen. You better say amen. amen. Now so. The covenant is what makes the day and the night to change position. God said in his word, in Jeremiah chapter 33 in verse 20 let's read thou saith the Lord if ye can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night and that there should not be day and night in their season verse 21 now then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant that they should not have a son to reign upon his throne and with the Levite, the priest, my ministers. Psalm 89 verse 34, my covenant will I not break nor alter the word that have gone out of my mouth. Genesis 8 22 While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest time and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Seed time cannot cease. Harvest time cannot cease. So the seed time is tied to the harvest time. So the moment there is a day, the next thing that we follow is there is a night. So if you have dropped your seed, the next thing that we follow is your harvest. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. There is no level of wickedness from any man that can stop the day and the night from coming to pass. Likewise, there is no level of wickedness that can stop seed time and harvest time from coming to pass. That brother shared a testimony after the sister's wedding. A wicked soul that felt that the enchantment is forever packaged a dead ant. Is he a dead ant? I've heard of another one, a dead lizard. Another one, I have heard of a dry bread. Who saith it in and it come to pass? When the Lord commanded it not. Who doeth it in and it come to pass? And it lasts forever. God said in his word, my counsel shall stand and I will do all of my good pleasure. So there is no level of wickedness that can stop seed time and harvest time from coming to pass.
Why do we give? Our giving is a proof of our faith in God's word that God is not a liar. Neither is he a joker. Scripture says he sought for one to swear by and he found none. And he said, by myself have I sworn. God staked his integrity. God staked his person. By myself have I sworn in blessing I will bless you. In multiplying I will multiply you. So your faith in God also shows in the seed you give. He that goeth forth bearing precious seed to sow shall doubtless return again bringing his sheaves with him. We are not dashing God money. We are not dashing church money. We are sowing our way into our great future. You are not doing God a favor by your giving. Here it were. Every giving you give is for your sake, not for the sake of the church. So you can decide to hold your money. If I were to be hungry, I will not ask you for food. The cattle upon a thousand hill, they are mine. The silver is mine, the gold is mine. You need what God will give. That is why understanding giving is what makes living colorful. If you have not understood giving, your life cannot be sweet. Why do we give? Giving is a proof of our confidence in the ability that God will supply. People who can't give are the ones that think that their destiny is controlled by their pocket. David says, since I was born, now I'm getting old. I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging bread. The young lion may suffer for once, but they that seek the Lord shall not lack any. Say with me, any. Any good thing. Your giving is your purchasing power of whatsoever thing you desire in the realm of the spirit. It's your buying power. So by your giving, you are sacrificing your way for something to come your way. Why do we give? Our giving also is a proof of our victory over the love of money. Money is not evil. Let me repeat. Money is not evil. The love of money is the root. Money is your servant. So you send your servant on an errand. Am I saying something to somebody? That's why scripture told us that we will lay up gold as dust. You will match money. Say with me, I will match money. It's a proof that you have conquered the love of money. It's a proof that you have conquered greed.
We have looked at tithes and offering. We have looked at giving to the poor, to the needy. This morning our focus is on kingdom promotion seed. Kingdom projects. Investment in kingdom projects is investment into your destiny. Investment into kingdom projects unlocks the future for you. Releases what God has in store for you. Man can withhold his own, but God will not withhold his own. He said, we told not good from whom it is due. When it's in thy power of thy hand to act, he said, do not say to your neighbor, go and come back tomorrow when you have it right there with you. So everything I'm doing to advance the kingdom is advancing my life, advancing my family, advancing my future, advancing God's plan and purpose for me. So where your destiny is now is where your seed has brought you to. It's where your sacrifice has brought you to. Where do you want to be? In the next two years, in the next three years, in the next five years. Kingdom Advancement Project is your platform. It gives you cheap access to a fast rise. There are some of you now, where you are now, if they give men chance, you will never be there. They will fight you to your teeth to make sure you don't smell it. But by reason of sacrifice, by reason of kingdom advancement project, <laughs> he said, I'm the one that opened it and no man can close. No wonder God has choicefully moved you to where you are. And they say, how did this small boy get here? They didn't know that this small boy has a big God that is opening doors for him. That's how God will be opening doors for you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. The first Shiloh sacrifice I gave, I will never forget. Shiloh 1999. Oh my God. I don't know whether it was 6,000 or 7,000 that I had then. The first thing I removed was my Rolex watch. But I noticed that when I was packing the things that I wanted to give as sacrifice, my mother was watching. She would come, she would watch, she would go out. So, finally she now came and said, all these things you are packing now, where are you going? I said, I'm going to say it as is. She said, this is your madness I've started again. It's a good madness. I say it's a good madness. I packed. I packed all my designer ties. Everything. I looked at some of the I don't know how to describe those kind of um, plates. I don't know how to describe them. They are in sets. I packed them. I packed them inside one big bag. Say, you have started again. I said, it's better for these things to go so that my life can be better. I can buy them later. I will have them more than enough. And truly, truly, all those things I gave out now, some are in Portacot. I left some in Aba. Uh, in Aba. Some are in, uh, some are in Benin. The thing is just, there is nothing that leaves your hand that will not enter back into your life. I heard of a man, his most valuable asset was his uh, manual telephone. That one you do like this. Landline. That was his highest asset. So he had to go and trade it to Nitel. And someone bought it and paid him. And he paid his um, 
Shiloh sacrificed and God opened his door. If I remember that time now and the changes that have taken place, it looks as if nothing even happened. Nothing even happened. Nothing even happened. Whatever you hold tight is what is keeping you tight. Hold it tight. It will tie you tight. I choose to make sure that those things go so that destiny will open. Just to make sure that it goes. It was so terrible that I was nicknamed so so. Everything wants so. Everything wants so. One day you go carry us go so. But I'm so glad today that all the mouths that called me so so. They are joined the reward of so so. <laughs> you are not truly living if you are not a sower. You are not. You are just like the Red Sea that is only receiving, it's not giving out. Hear me? There is no aspect of your life that requires a turnaround. That your seed cannot initiate. Your seed, your sacrifice, your kingdom advancement project can initiate your turn around. 360 degrees. Go away, turn it. He said, I will overturn and overturn and overturn until whose turn it is? Is it your turn? Yes, sir. So your seed has power. Say with me, power to turn around anything around you. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, say we are like them that dream. I'm shifting realms in sowing. I'm entering another realm now. I can't tell you everything. If not, some of you can't sleep well. So at your level, so, tell your neighbor so. He that observed the wind shall not sow. And he that regarded the cloud shall not reap. If you are an observer of times and season, you go beg. I'm watching the way the country is going. I don't understand it now. They have not passed budget. All the budget they have passed, has anything reached you? No, somebody should answer. All the budget they have passed, has anything reached you? Is it not true? All the budget they have passed, has anything ever reached you? And you are now complaining that Senate have not passed budget. Okay, they have passed budget. They passed it last week. Let's know what will be your allocation. <laughs> your economy is not here your economy is from there that's why scripture says my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus all not some all 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 my God shall supply my God shall supply God is your supplier Hear this. If you must change realms in life, life is in realms. So, do not be an occasional sower. There are people that sow occasionally, they only sow during Shiloh. No, look beyond that. You can program, program your life for seasons of change. And when you see any opportunity, you dive into it.
You can sow quarterly. You can sow monthly. Based on how you are blessed. But that, should I shock you now? Every face that I'm seeing now, everybody that you are seeing now, the worst thing you can do is to underestimate anybody. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The one you think that wear fine clothes may not be the one that wants to sew. The one that wear one cloth that is making him look unnoticed has something in the car, has something in the house, has something in the bank account. Program your life for seasons of change. You can do it every three, three months. You are not doing it for me, oh, please. Neither are you doing it for this church. You are doing it for yourself and for your family. For yourself and for your family. Program your life for seasons of change. Take advancement. As the kingdom is advancing, you are advancing. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? As the church is breaking forth into a new open heaven, you are breaking forth into a new open heaven. If it is in your heart, God will put it in your hand. It's because it's not in your heart, it's not in your plan, it's not in your shadow. That's why it looks as if you are hearing Greek. It's not Greek. This is real life. I'm telling you how our fathers they got to where they are. And they are still doing. The wise man said that those who don't like good things will always lack them. If you see good things and you are complaining, you always lack it. That is why your investment in knowledge is what guarantees your turnarounds in life the level of restoration you are bound to experience. Now, even restoration that we are about talking about is also tied to our seed. It's tied to seed. I will restore to you the years that the locusts, the plumber worm, and the canker worm have eaten. My great army, which I send among you, I will restore. Seeds have power to restore years. Say with me, years. Yes. So even if you have suffered some setback, you have been delayed in life. There's what Reverend Simeon Afolabi called the law of divine acceleration. Seeds and sacrifice has a way of accelerating destiny. Those of you who must have seen the new models of cars now, there's one they call accelerated gear. When you enter that one, now fly. May you not fly to heaven. <laughs> if you don't know how to control it, you can lose gear and enter entire bush. Praise God. Are you around saying now? Destiny can be accelerated. People that are making unusual progress, go and check it. There is something they are doing which you don't know. No wonder knowledge is very crucial for restoration and recovery. So if you want to secure your tomorrow and recover your wasted years, invest in knowledge. Every man's restoration requires an investment in knowledge. So when you invest in knowledge, you gain access to revelation. Because what you cannot see, you cannot take. Only what you see that you are permitted to take. O 
only what you see that you are permitted to take. To lose something is no longer news. You can lose your phone. Is that news? It's no longer news. But whatever is lost can be restored. Can be recovered. You are not even saying amen as if you are. I've discovered that anytime you are talking giving in a hard way, some people's countenance will just change. Their mood will just go bad. But the moment you shout, that will trouble you will die tomorrow morning. This, they will just tear this roof for you. No wonder they say truth is bitter. Am I correct? Very bitter. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Prayer is good. But you need sacrifice to make prayer answer. Yes. You need sacrifice to make prayer answer. One of the challenges many have had or experienced in the course of giving is that uh, after giving the first one, giving the second one, giving the third one, and they are not seeing any sign. This thing is not working. If it's working, ah, you should have answered by now. No. It doesn't work by your calculation. It works by his arrangement. Am I saying something to somebody now? Some of the blessing you are expecting from God now, are you prepared for it? Are you matured for it? It's just like now carrying a... Okay, who had that uh, news? Was it yesterday or day before yesterday? The woman packed her car and left the son in the car. And the son went and started the car and rolled inside the bush. I know in that little child mind was I've been saying, I will drive this car one day. I will drive this car. <laughs> the mother just packed and went to buy something. The little boy left where he was and came and started it in. Bah. Before you know what's happening, he entered bush, he cast some and sorted, and they brought him out. Now, let me say this. In the destiny of that child, there is a car. Am I correct? But is the child matured for the car now? Some of the blessing you are asking for is already in your future. But God wants you to mature to handle the blessing. You don't need to thank me. It's already there. It's already there. It's already there. In your future, there are cars. There are houses. There are pound sterlings. Massive dollars. You're not even saying amen. Any person that is not saying amen is the, the meaning is that his inheritance is poverty, so he cannot say amen. Yes, if you cannot say amen, you are confirming that your inheritance is poverty. Is poverty your inheritance? So when you hear what looks like your future, you echo amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Restoration and recovery is possible. Anything that is possible with God can be turned around for you. 
Anything that is possible with God can be restored for you. Hear this? No restoration, no recovery takes place without our mentality being in place. I don't know what you want restored in your marriage. This morning, if you can't believe God, restoration will take place. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Nothing makes a home sweet. Like fellowship. Some people think that the first thing that makes a home sweet is money. Is a lie. There are women that have seen money and yet the man is never around. He can even be around. He will never talk. He will just... The moment he finishes eating his food, his mind will be on the ceiling. You'll be thinking he's thinking of his work. It's a lie. Maybe one Jezebel have cornered him. I'm thinking... One reported last two weeks the husband is going to the toilet, he will put the phone in the pocket. I've not seen where toilet takes 25 minutes so. What's happening now? I'm still in the toilet. Not knowing that toilet is now conversation room. He's doing WhatsApp. May toilet not sap your destiny. Amen. Some people go to the toilet and put their phone so that the wife will not intercept any strange call. A lot of things happening even in church. But before that devil destroy you, may you be delivered. Amen. So one basic thing that God will restore in your family is fellowship. Somebody is not saying amen. amen. Fellowship is stronger than money. Say with me, fellowship is stronger than money. If fellowship is at work, money will flow. Money will flow. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the oil that flow from Aaron's bed down onto his skirt. He said, there, the Lord commands his blessing and life forevermore. There. So the blessing of God has direction. So when you are restored in fellowship, blessing begins to flow back to your house. Others need restoration in their career. How? There are some things that you used to experience, just like the psalmist said, for we see not our signs. There are some favor that you used to enjoy now, you are no longer enjoying them. Some progress you are making before now, you are no longer making them. Today there shall be a restoration. Yeah. I like the way Dr. Paul and Enche puts it. He said, spiritual devourers eat time. Physical devourers eat clothes and food. What eats your time eats your life. That's why God said, I will restore to you the years that the canker worm and the plumber worm have eaten. Spiritual devourers eat time, and life is tied to time. Whatever eats your time has eaten a major part of your life. But hear this. 
God operates a law called the law of divine recompensation. If you have lost three years, he will fast forward it. And the blessing of three years can come to you in three months. If you are saying amen, say better amen. The law of divine recompensation. Even in the, in the secular, if someone has been denied promotion, what do they do? They backdate the promotion. Meaning, all the arrears that he's supposed to collect, he will collect them till the present date. That will be somebody's testimony. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. I don't know what you have lost in your career. Your mates might have gone ahead of you. But hear this. You will recover all. Yeah. It is not how far. It is how well. It happened to me. I shared it in some places. I remember when they cut my, cut my money. I wrote and wrote. One morning, I had a voice. Make that salary a sacrifice and forget about it forever. It was a hard decision to take. But immediately I made up my mind the brain opened up where inspiration began to flow like pure water. The floodgates of ideas opened. The heavens opened. Two years back, just two years back, one of the person that masterminded it called another pastor to beg me. I said, it's late. I no longer eat salary. Salary is now prophet offering. My salary go as seed to my masters, to my prophets. He so it's already late. Tell him there's no problem. That if he wants the way out, he shall come. He can come, I will teach him. But me and him now, we cannot stand on the same platform. Like, like till Jesus come. He can never see my back. You see that I didn't know the button to press to get it back? I knew, but God spoke. Let it go. My own restoration came divine. Divine. Your own too will take place in divine. What man cheats you, God pays you. Did you get that? Laban cheated Jacob. God rewarded Jacob. He cheated him 14 years. How many years? years. When God needed to pay Jacob back, he gave him one idea and he recovered everything. Everything. Collected everything back. To the point, Laban's son said, this man is now greater than than us send him away from this place the way this man is growing is becoming larger than life send him away I remember a banker He's a very close friend. We met at the airport. He said, he said, Pastor, I'm supposed to be promoted above the senior manager level. I said, what's the problem? He said, they just don't want to promote anybody. I said, your promotion comes from God. Take your eyes away from your bank. If they don't want to promote you, God can relocate you. So he said, okay, how do I do it? I said, well, I don't know your sewing level before now. Start sewing. Start sewing. And don't sew gentle, sew dangerously. What did I say? Sew the sewing that will pain you, not the one that you bring out from your pocket. So when somebody wants to sew, they just bring out 200 naira. You didn't feel anything. 
the giving that you will feel is like they are drawing blood from your body. Somebody say, hmm. <laughs> So, after I told him so dangerously, I left him. The next time I met him, he said, sir, it's working. I said, what is working? He said, that thing you said, it has worked. I got a job bigger. Say with me, bigger. He said, I'm now getting the salary of an AIG. No, AGM, Assistant General Manager. Assistant General, I said, I'm getting the salary of an Assistant General Manager in another place. I said, can you see now, if you have been in that place and you are breaking your head, frowning face for everybody, keeping malice with some people, binding what you are not supposed to bind, you will have wasted your life. Now God has put it in your hand. God will still put your own in your hand. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. There can't be a restoration without a fight. To recover, to get restored, anything you have lost in your health or your wealth or your career, you must carry a warfare mentality. That is why there can't be a contentment without a contention. If you don't contend, you will never be contented. Everything God has given to you is already being contested. So you must contend for your portion. If you don't content, you can never be contented. Deuteronomy 2 verse 24. Deuteronomy 2 verse 24. Rise you up, take your journey and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given into thy hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Hishbon and his land. He said, begin to possess it. And do what? contend with him in battle. There are people you must contend with. If not, they will not give up on you. As I'm talking now, there are people that have vowed that you will not change level beyond where you are. Give them a fight. Life is designed for fighting. And scripture says, fight the good fight of faith. The reason why it is called a good fight of faith, the outcome is already defined. The outcome is already defined. So even if you don't want to fight for yourself, fight for your family. What did I say? You can't cancel the delay in your marital destiny without a fight. There are forces that have vowed that you will not change level. There are forces that have vowed that you will not, your story will not change. Give them a fight. Use God against them. You are either fighting or they are fighting you. And you know, witchcraft now has gone high tech even in church. They can even use people that are close to you to fight you. And they will be greeting you, bless you every morning. In fact, they are bless you. If you have not seen it, you will, be look, it will look as if nobody has greeted you that day. Nobody can deceive me with bless you. The moment I pick your signal, bah, hey, I position you for the 
place where vengeance they take place. I swear I am on the altar. Even if you are here, you are a member, you are being used to fight me, I position you in the line of vengeance. Because if you wound me, you can go and confess and still go to heaven. But before you wound me, let me clear you. It's as simple as that. That's why scripture say, no weapon, form nor fashion against me shall prosper. Any tongue, it can be pastor tongue, deacon tongue, deaconess tongue, member tongue, any tongue that shall rise against me. He said, I shall do what? Condemn. The enemy looking for you is not outside, it's inside. It's inside. And you know, it's more difficult to detect the enemy inside than the one outside. Now, even if there are enemies outside, they cannot effectively operate and assess you without the enemies inside. What are you talking about? How did they get Jesus? They needed an insider. But whoever is contending against your restoration, they will go down. Amen. You better say amen as I'm talking. Amen. When God said, I will restore. I will restore. The years. Let me share this testimony and we rise up to pray. A woman, a medical doctor, practicing doing very well to the point that she even has her own clinic in Lagos. And right there in her village I think it's the father had a shrine a small pot where she used in monitoring everything that is taking place on all the children. And by revelation one day, God now showed her what was doing her. She was not married. And yet, decent brothers were coming. They will come and all of a sudden, the thing will scatter. It will not take place again. So God, she now attended a service like this. God now showed her what to do. So she now traveled to Delta after Ugeli. As if you are going to um, Otoyede if you are familiar with those areas. So she traveled. She didn't get home. She slept in Ugeli in a hotel. Very early in the morning. Say with me early in the morning. She now got there where the father, the tree where the father is using to manipulate them. So she got there, hired someone, cut the tree down. Bah! So when the thing dropped on the floor, the man knew that something has happened. He woke up that early morning. So as he woke up that early morning to come and know what was happening, the sister appeared. He said, today your own has finished. Today your own has finished. Before the man would do some uh, invocation, he wanted to enchant something from her. The sister busted into tongues. Whatever you send against me, I send it back to you. Instanta, the man ran mad. Ran mad. And the madness graduated to Chris. You know, Chris passed mad. You know the one they call Chris? He put clothes. He removed boxer. And the gray hair began to show. <laughs> Hear me and hear me well. Whoever vowed that your story will not change, their arrow will backfire. Amen. Whatever they have done to keep your life stand still, their altar will scatter today. Amen. And funny enough, this is the same person she was sending money every month. 
Look, wickedness is beyond the face. It's beyond the face. Can't deceive me. She took her destiny by force. She took her restoration by force. And immediately she did that. Her heavens opened. Your heavens will open. Rise up to your feet. <clears throat> you are going to pray right now. Scripture says, In Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. And there shall be what? Holiness. And the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. You must be restored. I say you must be restored. Yeah. You are going to pray in the next two minutes. Whatever has vowed to keep me on the same spot, whatever has vowed that my restoration and recovery will not take place, Lord, let your vengeance fire strike against them. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your voice and declare from the depth of your heart whatever has vowed that my restoration that my recovery will not take place I engage your vengeance fire and I decree let them be smitten today that strong man that evil personality that agent of the devil that evil power and personality that has vowed to keep my life my destiny that evil personality sent as a devourer as a waster to my glory and honor God arise. Let your vengeance strike them today. My destiny shall be recovered. My marital glory shall be recovered. My career must be recovered. My destiny must be recovered. I am taking my full scale glory. I am taking my full scale honor. Lift up your voice and declare. Lebaro shakatalia, enzebe endo bere tuta liga dota pa. Jesus eklepe brele ata. Natalia bele kushata. Insododo rikatala megele ruta baladia. Any agents of the devil on our summit. To contend with my restoration and glory, restoration and recovery. Father, I engage your vengeance fire upon their head. I engage your vengeance fire upon their head. is enough I refuse to continue with this mess I refuse to continue with this setback whoever is involved whoever is behind it whoever is behind this delay this shame this setback Avengers fire. I terminate the assignments. Let their spell be broken. Thank you, awesome God. In Jesus' name we pray. All eyes closed, all heads bow. You are here, you are not born again. This is your golden moment and opportunity. Restoration begins with salvation. If a man be in Christ, not if a man be in church. All things are passed away and all things are become new. 
wherever you are right now you want to make it right with jesus wherever you are put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me lord jesus i come unto you today i know that i'm a sinner forgive me wash me with your precious blood i reject sin i reject satan come into my life be my lord and be my savior in jesus name i pray if you pray that prayer with me congratulations god bless you wherever you are